So back at the computer, uh, uploaded the files and what we're going to do is go through some of the shots and how I will edit them. Uh, so if you recall from the video I did quite a variation of uh, HDR images. Um, so that's bracketing three different exposures uh, just to capture as much dynamic range as possible. So we're going to break them down and show you how we go through the process of editing them on uh, Lightroom and using Photoshop as well as Nick FX. I use that quite a lot as well in the latter stages of the editing process. So let's jump in and see how we get on with the images. Okay, so this is us in Photoshop. I think what we'll head straight into doing and that is to go into the Color FX Pro 4 and this is on the Nick collection. So we'll open this up. As you can see, it creates a new layer here uh, for you to work on. So the underlying layer is, is untouched. You can always go back to that or even reduce the opacity in the, the top layer. Okay, so we're, it automatically opens up with um, brilliance and warmth. So we'll just bring this back a little bit here. Um, just see how it, how it works. The secret with, like a lot of these um, plugins, Usually when you first launch the filters, they're, they're, they're quite extreme and I'll show you later on. There's one I use down here, which is um, tonal contrast. Now when you first launch that, it is crazy, crazy HDR. It really, really disrupts the image. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's just not good at all. But um, we'll bring in some of the saturation here. But yeah, for that one, you really have to bring it down quite a bit. So again, we just kind of play, every image is so independent and so specific to the, the sliders. There's no real rule here. You can save recipes. Uh, I have done in the past, but it was a bit of a waste of time because every time you bring an image in, you, you end up having to tweak it and try different things anyway. And these are the filters along the side. This is what you, what we have to use. There's a whole, I've got the star, the, the main ones I use. Um, from Detail Extractor, Dark and Light and Set. Again, Detail Extractor is a crazy strong one when you first bring it in. Um, and as you'll see later on, that actually uh, you can be more precise with where you want the filter to be. So we'll, um, we'll have a wee wander through and see what options we have here. Have we look at the sky filter. It's just kind of brightening up a bit. Uh, what you can also do is toggle on and off. So that's just bringing a wee bit of warmth into the image, nice in the sky. So what we will do is just put it into the sky here. So that just gives a wee bit of variation and maybe uh, uh, drop it in here as well, just to brighten up this section. This is where the sun is, make the most of that. And it might have a facing rock here, just, just brightened up a slightly. Gives it a wee bit more interest. Let's have a wee look at the detail extractor. Now again, when you press on this, it'll look pretty extreme. And yeah, it just it creates just a messy, messy noise. So what, the only parts I want to use the detail extractor in is the rock face. Again, just to bring your attention in here. Not interested in having a detail extracted or brought out in the sky. We want that nice and soft. Drop one in here. And again, what you can do is you can Control the size of what it's actually covering here. When you highlight it, it comes up. And that's the opacity there as well. And once you've got these in place and you're happy with the, you can really crank it up and you can also increase contrast and the saturation in there. So again, toggling this on and off, it just gives you a bit of oomph of where it is. And you can also come up here to the compare. And this takes it right back to when you brought it into the Color Effects program. So that's where we've gone just with a couple of filters. Add another one here. I have to admit, I mean, there's so many filters in this that I've not even touched. There might be fantastic ones hidden away, uh, but I tend to just stick with the ones I use a lot of, and that way is a good workflow. So this is just bringing in a wee bit of contrast into the image. And again, as I said, we're recording this, so it might slow the computer down a wee bit, but it's really good if you've got um, big stoppers or little stoppers because it's got a great color cast correction. 
this is all you know, coloured well, so there's no real concern there. But some filters you get um, a colour cast, but this is where you want to bring it. You don't even have to bother about any of this. Uh, you can really focus on the colour cast. And again, this dynamic option is really, really good because it, it looks at the image and figures out what should really be done. You've also got controls here with the shadows. You can, you know, fade them up a wee bit. And again, you can protect the highlights there as well. So let's have a look what that pro contrast has done. Just gives it a little pop. So all it's required, just a little pop in the, for the contrast. So then we go down to this tonal contrast. Now again, when you touch on this, it's probably if you have been using Nick, Nick FX and you're a wee bit concerned about some of the things it throws at you, you, there is a lot you can do with something that looks ridiculous when it first comes into, um, into the filter section here. And here's a prime example, tonal contrast. And it just creates this... Uh, I don't know what we call it, horrible HDR, yucky, there's no balance, whites are out, everything is just absolutely crazy. But this is the setting it gives you, so what I always do is pull it right down. So it's really just a couple of percent here, maybe about five, four or five here. And again bring this right down. So it really is doing very, very little, and pull that saturation down just gives it a little kick. Might not be easy to see on the screen here, but it's just ever so slightly. Bump these up a wee bit here. It just brightens things up. It just makes things a wee bit poppy in the sensor. Again, we'll go back to compare to see how we're developing this. It is looking a lot better. Final filter will be the darken and lighten center. Let's bring that into the filter box here. So here, as the name suggests, you can darken and lighten the centre, but it also gives you a vignette look and you can uh, place the centre exactly where you want it. If you want the centre up here, down there, it works that way. So we'll pop the centre round about here, maybe along there a bit. Yeah, that looks nice. So here, this is the border luminosity, so you can brighten things up, you can bring things down tend to bring things down quite a bit and again this is the sensor so you see if we adjust this effect exactly where I've popped that center piece and you can make it small make it pretty large again you can see how you're developing here bring that center over a wee bit to here bring that down a wee bit Just to bring in this waterfall, just to show the attention. We've got these nice lines coming down here, so it does bring in a wee bit of information to the where your eye wants to fall. So again, a bit of comparing. This is when it comes in. Obviously, it came in as a you know a, a raw photo, so there's zero apart from the little boosts and tweaks I did in Lightroom. Uh, it came in here, and there's you know there's a lot you can do within the color effects system itself, and that's where we are. Quite a difference. So we'll save that, hit OK. And I'll be rendering this out back into Photoshop where I will be doing more editing, usually using the, the quick the quick brush. Yeah, again, just maybe highlighting some areas using the, the, the quick brush. So um, what we'll do is just duplicate the layer here. We've got one to work on. And again, go back to what we had. This is where we are now. So, brush, as you see you can paint in here and it comes up red, so I'm going to darken this area down a wee bit up here, again here as well, just ever so slightly. Press the Q button again, and that gives you that selection. So we'll jump in to here, and just want to bring this down ever so slightly. Just, it's just enough so it gives you a wee bit, again, pulls your eyes away from this side here, and draws you into the center part. And again, we just keep on doing this, and layering these curve adjustments up. Uh, for areas that you want. So here we have got an area that's quite dark. Let's see if we can bring some information out of this. So it really is just painting with light. This is what I'm doing here. Some areas that 
just maybe need lightening up a wee bit. Again, it take, captures a, a selection there. And go here, we want to brighten this up a wee bit. So again, some nice information, some nice detail here, but not pulling the eye too much away. You can see going right up, this is that's, that's what we're affecting here. So there we go. Now, what we want to do now is maybe just I can brighten some of this up a wee bit here. So again, a brush and just you know, just drop some selections over here. Just these wee edges. And there we are. So I can group these and show you what the difference is here. That's with it off, on. Just gives a wee bit more depth into the actual uh, image itself. I'm quite happy with that. Let's go back to what we came in with. So quite a difference there. Um, I'm liking the glow. I might do another uh, selection in here, I think. So again, brush. B and Q, and just type, just brush in some information here. So you've already got little highlights coming in there, so let's, let's make the most of that. Nice, just just enough. Again, that's what it's that's the difference it's making there. Okay, so let's flatten this out. What we'll do now is make a duplication, and we'll go into filter, and we'll have a look uh, at the camera raw. Here you are. Now I'm going to have a look at some of the noise that might have uh, crept into this. There's a little bit of noise just in the darkness in the rocks there, which is. To be expected, as I said, it's an oldish camera and um, the light wasn't great. So an awful lot of information they needed to really work hard at pulling here. Noise reduction up just to make it a little more kind of smoother. Okay, so just created another layer of both those layers above it. And then we go for the very last thing before we bring it back into Lightroom, which is high pass filter. This is a good way of of sharpening your images. Really, very subtly, just bring that down a bit. Because it's a busy, busy image, if it was minimal and there was only a little bit of information, then you can get away with bringing this up a little more, a bit more. But the, the rocks, the trees, it is quite busy. So I'm just reducing that to there. And pop it in overlay. Again, it just gives it a little bit of a pop. Um, still swithering to see if I could put some more more information in here. Let's try that. Just drop some uh, selection points in here. Bring that down a wee bit, maybe. Just where that tree is. Let's highlight the edge of that tree there. That'd be quite nice. So it's better. Okay, let's bring that back into Lightroom. And I'm liking how this is looking at the moment. It's it, it's changed quite a bit from when we first edited it. Let's have a look, and that's what it that's what it was. And this is where we brought it to. So again, the benefit of having the the foresight to bracket the shot is just so the information which is pretty much lost in some of the darker images. So this is for the sky. This was the balanced, um, and then there's there's that. There. Again, there's just not an awful lot of information in there until you look at the compared to the actual balanced one and 
you know, the overexposed version. So we're using those three, and this is what we come out with. A lot of work's done in NickFX. I do like NickFX, I think it's a great program. I was panicking when Google stopped the support for it. I believe there's another company that are going to be looking over, look, taking over uh, and looking after it. So there will be updates and it will still be possible to use it. So as always, just at the very end, I'll go over, because we're coming in with, a, again, just a complete new image now. So we've got a lot of these sliders that we can adjust if we want. Let's have a look and see what we can bring out. Again, it's going to be very, very minimal. Little touches here. Bring this saturation down a little bit. Okay, and there we are. There's the finished image. Not the best. There was, um, you know, it's, it's all very dark, but we made the most of the information with you, with uh, creating a bracketed shot just to bring the information which ordinarily would have been lost because of the sun setting here. And this all being in shadow, you really had to you know, overexpose just to get some of this information in here. And we've got the nice long trailing water coming through as well. So all in all, quite happy with that. 